How are you doing, Sarah? Pretty good. Got my tree. Got my hat. I'm all ready. I my I bought my my nephew's present today, which is really cruel joke teeth because like nine of his baby teeth fell out, including the front four ones. So you got him. Oh, that is that's awful. Why he has a good sense of humor about it. Like I need Santa to bring me teeth because I got no teeth. Like he's he has a good sense of humor about it. So I'm getting him joke teeth. You know, I got him other things too. Of course, she realizes he's going to be wearing those constantly. His parents are not going to be able to get him to take them off. I know. I told him I refused to sing him All I Want for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth song because I lost my two front teeth at age three and for years had no front teeth. And every Christmas, everybody would sing that at me. And I hated it. And I still hate that song. So I was like, because I love you so much, I'm not going to do that to you. But I am going to buy you joke teeth. Well, the reason things are looking a little sketchy tonight is because we are. I am in You're Manchester. Land of Charles Dickens. I uh, yes, in Manchester, I'm in the UK, and we are using a remote setup to get things to work. And you froze. God bless us, everyone. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Now you're moving again. So we're we're pretty much straining my computer and my laptop and the internet. If the internet does, in fact, explode at some point tonight, I am not sorry. That's that's not my that's not my problem. It's it's you know what I don't care. I am not sorry. Stupid internet duo breaks internet. Merry fucking Christmas. Damn right. Hey, that go down in history for that shit. So we've got some. We actually already have some Christmas stories. Here, uh, or what the fuck is wrong with you? I, I you know Hanukkah stories. Hanukkah passed already. Yeah, but I didn't find any stupid Hanukkah stories. I mean, I guess people don't really get stupid about Hanukkah. What's what's to get stupid about? You get presents for like oh, you know, how many eight nights you get fucking presents? I like, would be like free- candles and have some latkes, and it's pretty low key, as I understand it. I would be pretty chill if I got presents for eight nights, too. I would be pretty much, I don't need to do anything stupid. You know, I'm raking it in. Fuck it. And I'm told latkes are delicious, so. I've uh, never had latka. I'm such a Gentile. Yeah. How did I lose my teeth at age three? My sister threw me down a flight of stairs. And I swallowed them. And ripped my bottom lip off. I have a scar here. That's from the plastic surgery. Three. And that's how I lost my two front teeth. It's a Christmas miracle. Uh. All right, are you through traumatizing the audience? Not remotely, but uh. now I can do it with the news. Okay, let's get this thing started. I hope. I think it's working. Is it working? It better work. There we go. Each week, Catherine goes out worldwide in her web, finds all sorts of stuff, and brings us back here for the we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And, let me see over here, where's our first one? You know, they have you ever seen those public Christmas trees? They have these big ones in like public, you know, little towns have great big Christmas trees and they light them up and everything. Mm-hmm. You, you seen those? Yes. They seem the most innocuous things, don't they? Like, nothing could ever, nothing, no horrible stuff could ever happen as a result of that. Well, now that there is a war on Christmas. That's true. The Christmas trees will obviously pay the price. True. I'm not exactly sure what this was meant to convey in terms of the war on Christmas, but um, this comes to us from New Haven. Connecticut? And, yes. We have in Connecticut, indeed. And let me get it to show up properly. Please bear with us tonight. Computer? Computer? Um, like, two geeks got that one. And there we go. There's our story. Let me, oh, I need to send that to you, too. Um, 
Oh, while I'm doing that, I will read it out loud for people. Screaming Noel, talk down from Christmas tree. A man kept a crowd amused and cops and firefighters fearful for his safety Wednesday afternoon after he climbed way up a Christmas tree and refused to come back down. For about a half hour, police officer Dave Runlett finally convinced the man to climb down to safety. The drama began about noon. A crowd noticed the man, who is 42, whose first name is Noel, or Noel, but for the purpose of the story, Noel. 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 Um, up in the tree with two banners, one blue and one white, with text on it. He continued. He issued a continual bilingual stream of random statements. Freedom, he cried, and Merry Christmas. I think he's okay. his, his wires a little crossed. Not, Does it say what the sign said? I, I don't know. I'm trying to look at the sign, and it doesn't. You can't really read the damn thing because the tree's in the way. What I can see here. Um, cops and firefighters are right at the scene, tried to coax him down. Refused. Do you want to come down and talk about it? Asked Fire Lieutenant so wildly. I'm not crazy, the man yelled at one point. I'm demanding my rights. I'm okay. not sure what rights he was demanding. I want to go to court, the man shouted. Come on down, I'll walk you over, Runlet told him. He promised, the man proclaimed to Green before he began to climb down just as Hartman arrived. I'm not crazy. Okay, the man continued to shout slogans seemingly at random. Back to the future, he bellowed. He yelled about fighting oh. for freedom. I'm not crazy, he insisted. I want to go to court. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. See, um, when your cat climbs the Christmas tree, it's cute. When an adult <laughs> human climbs a Christmas tree, less cute. I was just, I'm not crazy. Back to the future freedom. I want to go to court. Merry Christmas. Maybe he was waiting for the tree to get hit by lightning at a precise moment so he could ah, be transported back to his time. Right, yeah. What Maybe is, he was trying to tell us something horrible about Christmas. Maybe he's the ghost of Christmas future. Maybe he's just batshit. What is... Maybe the war on Christmas is real and he's the ghost of Christmas future and he's trying to warn us that Christmas is going to go crazy. Going to go crazy? Always. Worse. Worse. Obviously so much worse. <laughs> what the hell? Just, you know, I imagine if you're just walking down the street one day, you look up at the Christmas tree, there's a guy going, freedom! At this point, I'd just be like, okay. I'm, I'm uh, cheated at this point. New Haven's a big college town. So I'm kind of wondering what all the, like, college kids walking to and from class we're thinking because like Yale is kind of all over like the Yale campus kind of encompasses a section of New Haven mm -hmm. and like you're on the Yale camp but like the you know there's a pretty famous bar called Toad's Place there's a bunch of stores like and you're still technically on the Yale campus so you know this could have been like you're going to the dining hall and you see this dude. And if it were a college student, it would have made total sense. But this guy does not look like he's in college. He looks he much older. He does not look like he's in college. He looks like he, I, I don't, I don't exactly, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> what happened here? I think it's pretty terrible reporting that they don't tell you what his banner said. I know, you can just, I'll let me try and, and scroll down to it so you guys can see it. Because it's just kind of, let me see here. Um, yeah, you can see there, it's just kind of, well, that, this, I love the, the look on the firefighter's face. It's like, just calm down, man, Jesus. But yeah, you can see the- None of us need this shit, man. 
None of us need this shit. I'm not kidding. Overtime. Yeah, look, you see the banner there? It's kind of uh, all screwed. Can't really see it too well. It's just kind of hidden behind the tree. Can't really. I I don't know what he was trying to do. What well, he he kind of fucked up his message there. Yeah. No. I thought this was going to be the story about Fox News flipping a bitch because some city was forced to put up a festivus pole with the Christmas tree. Did you hear about that? No. I forget I forget where it was, but somebody sued and um the city ended up having to put up a festivus pole with the city Christmas tree. Because religious freedom. Speaking Fox News, Fox News flipped a bitch. Apparently the festivus pole was built out of empty beer cans. America. Speaking of religious freedom, um, he's talking quite a bit about the war on Christmas, this perceived uh, belief that Christmas is being marginalized and pushed out of the public sphere, and that it's it's a, some sort of great conspiracy. Well, it kind of trickles down, and you have to wonder the people who espouse this message of we believe in Christmas, we believe in the message of peace on earth, goodwill for men, all this. Oh, no, they don't believe in all that other shit. No, not, not really. Jesus! Except their Jesus is kind of like Rambo. Yeah, I think so. Because he's white, he really likes guns, and he hates you. Yeah, especially in this particular instance. Um, it's like Jesus Van Dam. I think this is the opening shot in this year's War on Christmas festivities. Um, woman hits Salvation Army kettlebell ringer who said... Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas. And that is really barking up the wrong tree because the Salvation Army's on your side. Like, I, they won't even help out gay gay people. I, I won't give money to them because they have horrible policies re regarding gay people. They're on your fucking side, okay? Yeah, this is your constituency here, you know? Yeah. Let me, um... You're punching the choir in the face. From Phoenix, Arizona, some might call it the December debate. Do you greet people with Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays? A valley woman, who's also a bell ringer for the Salvation Army, says she was assaulted for choosing the wrong one. Christina Vindiola says a woman hit her outside the Walmart, of course, on 91st Avenue after she said Happy Holidays. The lady looked at me, said Vindiola. I thought she was going to put money in the kettle. She came up to me and said, do you believe in God? And she says, you're supposed to say Merry Christmas. And that's when she hit me. I don't see. This is what pisses me off. I don't understand when Happy Holidays became an offensive thing. Because there's also New Year's. And some people celebrate Hanukkah. Some people celebrate Diwali. Some people don't celebrate any of those things. Some people celebrate Kwanzaa. Like, I don't understand why that's offensive. Like... Fine, you know what? I my client my store has a lot of Jewish clients and they'll say, Oh, you know, happy Hanukkah. I'll celebrate Hanukkah, but I understand that they intended it to be nice, so I'll say, Well, happy Hanukkah to you. Yeah. I'm about as non Jewish looking as you can get, but I understand that they had a good intention. So I'm not gonna bitch at them about it. Big fucking deal. You this know? is past bitching though. I mean it's the, supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. The hap hap happiest filled time. with Christ love. And you're and you you come up with yeah, a Merry Christmas, bitch. Why would you do it? I can't imagine someone going, this is baby Jesus approved. This I mean, is I was raised in a home oh. where in our big front bay window every Christmas, we had a giant banner that filled the whole window that said, Jesus is the reason for the season. My friends called my house the Jesus house. Like, we were not fucking around Catholic. So, and still, I don't understand what the big deal is. Like, if somebody says happy holidays to me, happy, and I work retail. So, I'll t I say to people, have a nice holiday, you know? Yeah. Whichever one you have a nice holiday of your choice, you know? Solstice, whatever. Just enjoy. Right. right. And I don't get what's so wrong about that, you know? Like, it's not a new thing. Like, when I was in elementary school, we couldn't do... 
Christian based carols at the winter concert because there were non Christian kids in the school. It's not new. Well, it doesn't matter what faith you believe in, just so long as you pick the right one. <laughs> and the irony is, Jesus wouldn't like any of this shit. No, he wouldn't. Jesus would almost never say the answer is punching somebody in the face. Yeah, I. you really, this is, you guys want him to come back, right? Because I don't think he's feeling real welcome at the moment. Like, that, I... I'm pretty sure he would never say you should punch somebody in the face. Yeah. It wasn't exactly. really his style. He wasn't really a punch. And I know that the American Jesus is Rambo. So yeah. yeah. Guns and And no yea, problem. I say unto thee if they do not greet thee in the proper tone of the season thou shalt smack a bitch. <laughs> Amen. And the thing is, like, we stole this holiday from the pagans anyway. Like, speaking of that. Calm your fucking tits, Christians, because we stole this holiday from the pagans anyway. Speaking of strange little things connected to this, um, Holland. I believe, yeah, is this Holland? This comes from Holland. Yeah, Iceland. Sorry, Iceland. Iceland's having an interesting little problem. With uh, a little bit, a little bit of diversity. No, no, not so ice so much as um, elf. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of of pagan beliefs, um, I swear to God, this shit just does not get any more normal. Elf lobby, elf lobby, blocks Iceland road project. What kind of elves are we talking here? Like Galadriel? Elf advocates. Or Herbie. Elf advocates. Are they advocating for Galadriel or Herbie? It's, it's, this is elves. They've joined forces with environmentalists to urge authorities it's to abandon... to know what kind of elves. Urge authorities to abandon a highway project they claim will disturb elf habitat, including an elf church. The project had been held until the Supreme Court of Iceland rules on a case brought by a group known as Friends of Lava, who cite both the environmental impact and detrimental effect on elf culture of the road project. The group has regularly mobilized hundreds of people to block bulldozers, building a direct route from the tip of the Alfani's, Al, Alfani's Peninsula, where the president has a property, to the Reykjavik suburb of uh, Gardavia. Um, Scandinavian folklore to elves, trolls, and other characters. Most people in Norway, Denmark, and Sweden haven't taken them seriously since the 19th century, but elves are no joke to many in Iceland. A survey conducted by the University of Iceland in 2007 found that 67% of the 1,000 respondents thought it was at least possible that elves exist. A self-proclaimed seer, Raglinda Johnsdottir, uh, believes she to communicate with the creatures through telepathy. It will be a terrible loss and damaging both for the elf world and for us humans, she said, of the road project. It, it, I mean, there are superstitions all over the world. Like, yes. The Irish have superstitions about, like, the fairies. And, you know, but I don't. I don't think, like, that's ever held up municipal improvement. Like, are they afraid Legolas is going to come and shoot them with an arrow? What? I, yeah, I, think, I think Legolas could take care of his own fucking self, you know? Right, like, I think if there were elves and you really pissed them off, we would probably know about it. Yeah, besides, besides that, they're fucking busy with the next Hobbit movie. They're booked up. They don't give a shit about this road thing. They all sailed off into the West anyway. Yeah. They left our asses behind, man. This I love how people can pull this bullshit out of their ass and stop a road being built. Imagine if they tried that shit over here. Yeah, I mean, you is there any 
like I was starting to think because of the way that the article was written that maybe they use elf for a type of people in their culture. Like, so, you know, like maybe the <laughs> bloodline, maybe it's something. And no, it just. Computer Roman, save, save Keebler. I, I well, just... I mean, if this is going to affect the cookies, then yeah, fuck that highway. Why? Imagine this ship would not fly over here. You couldn't go, yeah, you can't build this road because they're elves and you'll destroy their habitat. And the response would be... Dude, that, it, that didn't even work for the Native Americans who were actual people. Yeah, they were, yeah. They, we built over actual fucking people. Ain't Forget no mythical elves. people. We didn't stop for actual people that got here first. We don't give a shit. We bulldozed we'll right the fuck over their ass. Yep. We, we, we don't give a damn shit. Manifest oh. destiny, y'all. Oh, Ma Merrick says they just don't give a puck or an over on either. Duh. And there's a lady. Fairies, not elves. And there's a lady not who. The same she, thing. There's a lady who's claimed she's in telepathic contact with the elves. This is the thing that. Well. Happened. Good for her. Good for her. Good on you, lady. So Santa knows exactly what she wants for Christmas, and it's lithium. What were there other traditions in 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 other parts of the world regarding Christmas? Sweden has an interesting. One. Do you know they did that originally? They believed that Santa was not the person who brought them the gifts. Um, Centuries-old Scandinavian tradition says that. Before Santa, a goat brought gifts. Oh, is that like Dominic the donkey? I don't know. It's a goat. It's not like but there's Dominic the Italian Christmas donkey because the reindeer can't climb the hills of Italy. You don't know that song? I don't know that song. Ding 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 ding! Hee haw hee haw! It's Dominic the donkey. No. No. That's sad. You should know that song. It's a great song. Okay. But um, anyway, go on with your go. So what they do is they build a giant straw version of this goat in Sweden around this time of year. And then and, they put Nicolas Cage inside it and burn it? Well, no, not the Nicolas Cage part. You see, apparently they do this to celebrate and it, it's been burned. This year it got burned down. Oh. Like it has been burned down every year. For 27 years. Maybe they should put Nicolas Cage inside it. Oh, a vandal. Yeah, uh, let's see here. Vandal's Torch. Sweden's giant Christmas goat for the 27th time. Um, Is this like their devil's night? Vandal's in Sweden. It burned down the 27th time. A giant straw goat meant to symbolize Christmas. 13 meter high and 3.6 ton heavy straw goat was engulfed in flames early Saturday after unidentified assailants attacked it in the Swedish town of Galvi, 150 kilometers north of Stockholm. The goat is a central Scandinavian Yule symbol that preceded Santa Claus as the bringer of gifts since 1966 when the tradition of erecting the giant straw goat in the town square was introduced. Vandals have burnt it 27 times. I think I know what's going on here. Look at the picture. Uh -huh. Look at the after burning picture. Tell me that shit doesn't look like a Trojan horse. It does a bit. It does a bit look like a Trojan horse. I would set that motherfucker on fire too. <laughs> you think that every year they're afraid they're being invaded. So hey. they burn the fucking goat down. You never know. 27 The one times. time you don't burn that fucker is the time that all of Al-Qaeda jumped out of it. How about, just just for a change, just one year, or build the fucking goat out of asbestos. Just once. Well, give people cancer, so I doubt they're going to do that. But they won't burn the goddamn thing down, though, will they? Maybe just make one out of stone and just roll it out every year. 
Don't, Dork. Don't they have like non flammable shit to build? Yeah, like stone. But stop building it out of the straw. It's like they got to that one part of the three little pigs. Just stop reading. Straw apparently was the only fucking option. Well, I mean, straw is probably part of the tradition. We're not Swedish, so we don't know. <laughs> Dodger, goats go to hell. You're doing it wrong. Stop. Oh, okay, D.A. Scott. These vandals sure have a way of getting their goat. That pretty much, that's nail on the head right there. I just, stop burning away. And some, you know there's a club. There's a group that gets together and plans this. Like the well, yeah, it's like tradition now. Like, okay. The year, um, the, the, year, the year that goat doesn't get burned, everybody's going to freak the motherfuck out. Okay, Stacy's bringing the uh, potato salad, and um, Charlie's doing the decorations, and uh, Dave's bringing the gasoline. So we all know what we're doing next weekend. The year it doesn't burn, that whole city is going to freak the fuck out. It's like a, it's like a meta tradition. The tradition of building the goat and then the tradition of burning the fucking town. Oh. Well, do you remember the story of the Gift of the Magi? Remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. Oh, Henry, that shit we had to read in, what was it, elementary school for me? I think it was elementary school for me. I think so, yeah. Yeah, they had to... And, and you know, the story is... Man wanted man wanted a watch, and his wife wanted combs, and and you know he sold the watch. I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'm not giving you any spoilers, but you know, for well, an old story that's a hundred years old. Yeah, that's right. Well, this guy, um, I think he his heart was in the right place, but his methods were a bit suspect. Um, and yeah, this is uh. Now, man arrested for trying to use alligator to buy beer. Uh, I'm. I just. I. I what? I. I. I what? Oh, okay. So Miami, Florida. Of course. Of course, it was Florida. Florida man does something very unusual to get himself a beer. Instead of getting this cold one, he got himself arrested. Police say Fernando Aguilera, Aguilera, Aguilera yeah, uh, asked the store owner to make a trade his alligator for a 12-pack of beer. And the, the, the grammar here is atrocious. Ask a store owner to make a trade his alligator for a 12-pack of beer. It's called a semicolon. Look that shit up. Surveillance footage shows him in the convenience in the convenience, as he's holding the four-foot alligator and trying to make the deal. One of the other customers called 911, which store owner Javier Herrera I was thankful for. I was scared. It's the first time someone with that, that, that kind of animal was in the store. I've seen somebody with that kind of animal in the store. Herrera said, this guy is crazy. What the fuck is the convenience store going to do with an alligator? I don't know. Maybe this was. We don't, we don't do barter. Maybe this anymore. was his his Christmas shoes. You know, maybe, my mama really wants this beer for when she needs Jesus. Right. Sure, I'd like to buy this beer. I'm a little short, so take this alligator. It's for you know when she needs Jesus tonight. What was that sound? Was that a cow? No, that's the chair. Oh. The chair has been making commentary all night. Oh. Uh, it just, it. <sighs> it tra Maybe sell the alligator to a pet store. I know. He, he's kind of missing someone in the equation. Right. You're kind of losing phase two there. First, you take the gator to the pet store. Then, then you get the money, then you get the beer. This is not an instance in which you can cut out the middleman. It's not, no. it's, 
No, that's not an. <laughs> and how much beer is an alligator worth? Yeah, only a 12 pack for a gator? I know, that seems like. I mean, at least go for the case. Yeah, way to lowball it, dude. Get a case for right? the. It's a gator! Okay, go on rampant. Okay, I got Zalgator. Can I get 12 back for this? Oh, and maybe some Tic Tacs. Yeah, I mean, at least throw in the Tic Tacs, for God's sake. I you know, you know. A scratch off ticket, maybe. It's a gator. Oh, the alligator was released back in the wild. And there was arrested and charged with, with possessing, illegally taking, and attempting to sell an alligator. So apparently he just went into the woods, found a gator, and tried to get beer for it. The woods are not an ATM machine. <laughs> That's not how that works. We haven't been a barter economy for hundreds and hundreds of not years. For quite a while, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's you know. <laughs> Can you break a gator for a 50? <laughs> yeah, I can you for a gator? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so you're you're not traveling this year for holidays, are you? No. Yeah, I am. I'm flying back. I, I flew here. I'm flying back. Lots of people are flying for the holidays this year. And I had, I already had 10 hours of flying to get here. And I've got 10 to get back. It's a long ass flight. Now, my problem was when our plane arrived here, we arrived early, which you think would be a good thing, but our gate wasn't clear. So we had to sit on the runway for a half hour waiting for the others to leave, and that's bad enough, but this next guy, this, that, at least you understood the reason, because the gate was occupied. In this case, the reason was Douchebaggery, mostly. Um, let me show you here. Flight delayed two hours. Can you guess why, kids? For pilot's sandwich delivery. I fuck you. Fuck this guy. Yeah, I know. This this is this comes from. Uh, let's see. Where's my laptop is starting to stop fucking up so I can actually read the story to you guys. Come on. Up we go. Up we go. Okay. Pilot reportedly delayed a New York bound flight for more than two hours as he waited for a sandwich delivery. The nation reported that a foodie pilot for Pakistan International Airlines insisted the aircraft waited at Lahore Airport for sandwich delivery from a five star hotel in the city, even after being told it might take as long as two hours. Flight 711 was set for an on-time departure at 6.45. Um, when the pilot learned there were no sandwiches on the menu, only peanuts, chips, and biscuits, he said he needed sandwiches at any cost. Uh, the request was sent to the catering office and the airline's management office. Management directed the catering department to meet his demands. According to the paper, the flight finally departed at 9.15, a two-and-a-half-hour delay. It's an airport. It's yeah. probably a fucking blimpy. Get that motherfucker a sub and get him off the ground. Two and a half. And he called, what I love is he called management and management said, do it. Okay. Management for the airline said, yeah, go ahead. Do whatever he says. It's cool. I mean, I get, like, all right, it's a long flight. I would like something to eat. But, like, let me run to the airport food court. I, I just... So, can you pack a lunch, you fuck? Because if they had to go through a hotel, that sandwich had to get through security. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But, no, he couldn't. You buy bread, you buy the meat and the cheese and the mirror quip, you put the shit together, you put it in a plastic bag, you take it with your ass to lunch. You, you do not call a goddamn, a hotel. Although he couldn't, the fucker wouldn't even call like, you know, a, like a fucking subway. Well, no, no. we don't know if that was down. It was, I mean, the catering office, that 
hotel might be what where the airline gets their food. You know, that might be who provides their in-flight food. And they just didn't think to call anybody else. But fucking blimpy in the airport. Two and a half hours sitting in that plane. Uh, in, in, and it's hot in Delhi. It's fucking hot in Delhi. Sitting on that, that runway, baking in the sun in a sardine can, while Captain Fuckwad awaits his tuna salad sandwich. Mm-hmm. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. That's really all there is to say is fuck that guy. And I hope that sandwich gave him dysentery. <sighs> Just yeah, okay, wonder younger. I know the sandwich this guy deserves, a knuckle sandwich. It's a shame they make those those cockpits where you keep busting into them because goddamn this guy deserved it. Are you trying to hijack the plane? No, motherfucker, need a sandwich. You could take the plane. I'm gonna fucking knock him in the face. Okay. That, that's pretty much, and that's when I shot him, Your Honor. I don't think you'd get away with that. They take airplane stuff pretty seriously these days. Apparently not seriously enough. The fucking management went, oh yeah, this is a good plan. Let him. Sure. Put it yeah, in. no, that's certainly a reason to fuck up the whole flight plan for the day. Because that affects other flights. Like, everything one flight does affects other flights. Like you said, you yeah. got stuck because another flight took too long to leave. There are flight paths that are very intricately, you know, yeah. worked out. Like, you're fucking up everybody's Cheerios there. Our last one comes from the UK, where I am currently staying. Just to prove that no place is immune. You... What? What did you do? No, this happened. I want to point out this happened on Thursday, the 19th of December, the day before I got here. I was on a plane. I have an alibi. Mm hmm. And of course, this one, just to, to even things out, we're going right back to our wheel, wheelhouse. I'm actually a little impressed with this guy. Because this, this shit, this is killing. Bring it up here on the screen here. I think you all might be a little impressed with him too, because goddamn. Motorway masturbator caught driving nude while sexting. That's some mad skills going on there. What was he driving with? 49-year-old lawyers told Chester Magistrate Court his client got carried away when engaged in a messaging conversation. Uh, Neil Marshall of Strawberry Green Whitby was spotted by a truck driver performing the sex act on himself as he cruised down the M56 motorway in his Ford Escort. He charged an act of outrage in public decency in which he pled guilty. It was revealed in court that Marshall was given a six-month community order and a six-month supervision order for committing the same offense in 2008. <laughs> I shouldn't, ask what, I shouldn't ask what he was driving with because Tom routinely drives his car with his knees and plays with his phone with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, truck driver was one of my favorite habits of his, the driving with the knees. But... I do that too. I do that too. A driver, a truck driver was driving on the M56 with his partner, Marshall, steering his car while indecently touching himself. He was naked and there was no one else in the car. Prosecutor said the truck driver took down the registration number and police later used it to contact the offender. Marshall's lawyers told the court that his client, quote, bitterly regrets his actions. He never intended to be seen by a member of the public. Well, you know how you avoid that. Stay home. Stay the fuck home. Don't do the shit in public. You see how that works? It's very simple. If you don't intend to be seen jerking off in your car while sexting and naked, don't get in your car! Why are you in your car naked anyway? I can't even drive barefoot. I don't know how you could do the entire car naked. You know? My, my feet slip off the pedals. 
because I, I don't have any traction when I'm trying to drive an airplane. So I can't even do that. I don't understand how you're sitting there naked. But was it a- but why, are you, why are you in your car naked? Like, I've had to change clothes in a car before. Right. But I, I can't think of a reason outside of lascivious acts that you would just be birthday suit naked in your vehicle. Uh, because, uh, must be horrible when you mistake your erection for your stick shift. Mm. And unique motorway masturbator is my seven wolf cover band. <laughs> I like that. That was nice. Oh, Merrick, because of auto erotica. <laughs> Look, Ma, no hands. Yeah, yeah. And the hits just keep on coming. I've heard of multitasking, but this is ridiculous. Ford Escort, not what you think. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. I just... I, you also have to be impressed with the guy. He's able to keep um, at attention the entire time. I would think that would be a little distracting for a gent, you know? Apparently not. But no, It sounds like there's an angry cat in there with you. It does, doesn't it? Nope, that's like just keep the just chair. rolling over its paws or something. Nope, that's the shit. There, there are actually cats here, but no, that's not that's not it. I my wish nephew got, my nephew got a kitten. She's very very cute. I wish Smeg was here. I could put it on the air and Tom would lose his shit. And well, that's the thing. Like you all remember the Tom video of Tom from last week. Yes. We're going to my sister's for Christmas and my nephew just got a kitten. There's no way Tom's keeping his cool. No way. I've met this kitten. She's very sweet and very cuddly. He's going to lose his mind. Well, I guess what we first thing we learned this week is there's a simple way to avoid public indecency. Remove the public part. Yeah. Ta-da! Don't jerk. Don't jerk and drive. Don't jerk and drive. Don't jerk. Like that's going to be the next big campaign. Once we get the texting and driving out of the way, you know, now they have the signs that says no text is worth it. It's going to be like no jizz is worth it. I would just, I feel bad because at that point, your fetish has gotten so bizarrely specific. Sex must be awful for you. You know, if you have to be I masturbating. can't jerk off to these shoes unless you make him buy them. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> some people have hangups. We learned this week that just because you fly a plane does not mean you're immune from being a total cocksore. Well, no, I just, that fucker, motherfucker, you know that. Ugh. Unacceptable. No. I yeah, you want it? Yeah, that's the. This is why. I really want to be able to kick down one of those doors and go, fucker, take off! The goat. Just because you've done something the same way for your entire time, it maybe update a little bit. Because one day that goat's going to burn. Burning. Yeah. Well, and one- burning, and then everybody stand around it and sing, Trado! Bernadetor! Let's. let's that, that would be. Yeah. We learned that in Iceland, apparently, you can claim crazy shit and stop municipal projects. Yeah. I fully look forward to going over there and telling them that little men who live in my head will be miffed if they do not give me money. Well, I mean, is the highway being built by Sauron? (laughs) Because then I think they might have a point, but... I think maybe they're thinking more like David the Gnome type shit. Remember David the Gnome? I think more maybe more like that. I never watched that show. You never watched David the Gnome? Really? Nope. We learned the war on Christmas. Never ending. That it's fought on every front. Even at the Walmart. Especially at the Walmart. 
And lastly, we've learned that if the holidays are getting you down, just climb a tree and start screaming. We should all do that and send you videos for next week. I, I, Radio Dead Air, and none of the associated producers are in any way, any way, held responsible for the acts of our audience running out climbing trees and screaming stupid shit. Can I give them their Christmas? Can I give them their Christmas present now? What are you going to do? I'm a happy hippo. Three thousand miles, you're still pulling that shit. Well, yeah, it's Christmas. Ah, humbug. <laughs>